Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Kelly, coming straight at you for the Queen's Tarot Beat in Boston. So, um, I got a request from a couple people, and they stated that they wanted me to do a video on karma, where it comes from how it attaches itself, and how you can earn it versus not earn it. I'm a hot mess. My daughter's been throwing up on me for hours. Um, she's not feeling well, so Aries is in the other room with her dad, and... Um, she's not doing so good at the moment so we've called the doctor and um, if she gets a temperature then we need to take her to the hospital but I have baby puke all over me so don't bother looking at me today and this I can't help I'm not a fucking nun and what do I do I just had a baby so I will keep pulling it up throughout this but shit happens we're all grown adults here and we see that you know I'm wearing another tank top and everything it's just not working so karma now if you think about the world in matter I think about the world in a quantum physics way okay I think about the world as matter this right here this solid desk wouldn't be solid if all that matter didn't come together and give the optical illusion that it was solid now, if all these, this matter split apart, then we wouldn't have an issue of it being solid. It wouldn't be there. So think of it like that. Now, say this split apart. All those particles are going to be in the air, right? Well, matter attaches itself when you speak it into existence or you act it into existence is from what I've learned over the years. I've been doing this 30 years. So I hope I learned something. Um, now think about it. If there are negative atoms in the air, what are, what are they attracted to? Positive. Okay? If there are positive in the air, what are they attracted to? Negative. So when you speak words into existence, your words carry weight because they attach themselves to either positive or negative, right? And your actions are the same way. If I were to take this and throw it, it would smash. So your actions and your words are very much the same thing, okay? You speak it into existence or you act it into existence and it attaches itself to whichever of those is positive or negative. So say you're into black magic or you're into dark matter as I would like to refer to it. And you wish ill upon somebody, okay? That wishing ill upon somebody then attracts negative. So think of it as working backwards, only it's attracted by what you say and do. So if you do negative, if you speak negative, that shit is going to attract negative. And no, it isn't one of those situations where negative and negative equal positive. This isn't fucking math class. Okay, let's be realistic here. I'm trying to get you to understand from a quantum physics point of view because that's the way my brain thinks. I am a super nerd. When I have time to myself, which is never, I try to learn new things, but over 30 years I've accumulated knowledge. <clears throat> so when you're thinking about it, okay, and you wish ill upon somebody, that's going to attract negative matter. And it's going to go back out into the world and it's going to affect an individual. When it affects said individual, this is how you earn karma. Because why? The number one rule of dark and light matter and karma is you never break a person's free will. Now, you've broken their spiritual path and you've broken their free will by wishing ill upon them, right? So now they're 
spiritual track goes a completely different way because you've wished ill on them. You've taken away their decision-making process. You've taken away their free will. That's going to come back to you once it's exacted its revenge on whoever. That is going to come back to you. It's just the way that it works. It's energy. It's an energy flow. And that's the way that the energy works. Now, if you wish positive on somebody, that's going to come back to you. Okay? And a lot of the time, this is why tarot cards are not an answer for you. They're not something to make a decision by. Because all of these, this matter if you will, I personally believe creates and backs up the super string theory where there are 27 dimensions. The first 10 are spatial, which means they take up space and time, right? The 11th one is dimension of time. Now that is something that's man-made in a way. It's illusionary. It just keeps us on a schedule so we know day from night. Now let's face it. The energy at night is completely different from the energy during the day. The moonlight energy is soft. It's beautiful. It's almost fragrant. Where the daytime energy is harsh and you need to put on chemicals to keep from getting burned. So when you think about it in that matter... It's also yin and yang because when the earth moves, when the earth moves, it goes in what we call a 24 hour period. Now, <clears throat> we don't technically get 12 hours of daylight where I'm from. We're lucky if we get a few between all the clouds and the smog. Like today, it was, yesterday it was uh, almost 60 and my best friend was sunning herself in the driveway during her meetings, being quarantined. Today, it snowed six inches and tomorrow it will be 60 again. But the thing is, <clears throat> excuse me, the thing here is, is that when it comes to karma, In those dimensions, that matter, dark and light matter, exists in all of them. The other, you're wondering, she only told us about 11 dimensions. So what about the other ones? What about the other 16, right? Well, the 12th dimension is where the angels are said to reside. Now, each one of these is a different vibration. Okay, so when you hear people talking about vibrating in the fifth dimension or vibrating in the fifth, that's what they're talking about because we are bred to vibrate in the 3D. So when people are trying to raise their vibration, they're trying to raise their vibration into a different dimension. The fifth dimension is where you're disconnected from your physical body but it's not a bad thing. It's in the sense that you don't have the cares and the worries of the third dimension. You don't cry. You're not always upset. You're not always anxiolytic or stressed out. You're not pacing the floor with your anxiety. You feel at ease. You feel comfortable with everything. You know the divine are going to catch you if you fall. You don't stress yourself out. But we are bred for our minds by the government to vibrate in the 3D. Our minds are capable of far more than what we're told. But if we all knew that, we'd all have different lives, right? Well, here's a way to have a better life. You can vibrate higher. You have 10 dimensions to work with. One starts with the very worst life you could live. 
all the way up to 10 to the very best life you can live. It's called living your best life. It's okay if you get somewhere in between. Just get out of number one. Okay? Number two is said to be esoteric. Number three is 3D. You want to get to number five. Now, those other 16 dimensions, this is what we call the makeup of the genetic code and genetic material. Because after 12, where the angels reside, is mathematical codes to restart every single species on this earth. The earth itself, it's a total reset button. So we focus on the first 10, okay? And in those 10 reside karma. Why? Because those 10 are made up of matter. Those 10 are made up of... So if we attract negative matter and we send it out in the world against somebody, whether it be jealousy, whether it be envy, whether it be hate, whether it be whatever, it's going to exact its revenge and then come back for your ass. Okay? It's going to come back for your ass. I think I hear my daughter squealing. If you put out positive energy for people you love, for the world, for those you care about, whatever it is, that's going to come back to you as well. That's called karma. Now, I bet a lot of you didn't know that you could speak your reality into existence. And now you do. That's what the government doesn't want you to know. Those are the secrets to living your best life. The more you speak into existence what you want, the more it comes true. I'm determined I'm buying a house in Bali and I'm going to move to the tropics and raise my daughter there and homeschool her. Not that it makes a big deal now since everybody's homeschooling, but I'm going to homeschool her in Bali in a beautiful house. And I keep speaking that into existence until it becomes my reality. Speaking things into existence creates your reality, okay? It creates your reality. And so the more you speak it, write it, put it out there, collect all of that matter, the more it's likely to bring you to the dimension where you're living your best fucking life. There's a secret the government doesn't want you to know. Now, there's a book that came out a while back called The Secret, and just because it wasn't an instant gratification, people forgot about it. Also, because it's work. It's fucking hard work to get up every day, be positive, and speak into existence something that isn't happening like that. I'm not going to have a house in Bali tomorrow. I'm 40. It's going to take me some time, but my ass is going to get there. You watch. I'll be doing videos from my porch in Bali with a beautiful background someday. And you guys are going to be like, are you kidding me? And if I don't go, it's because I'm actively choosing. I'm making a choice to stay here, which I don't know why I would do that. <laughs> um, it might be because my husband's family wants to see my daughter but it's because I'm making an active choice to stay here that's the energy that I'm putting out right right and so all the time I'm constantly saying my house in Bali you don't speak it as if you think it will happen or you just want it to happen and if it does it does you speak as though it's happened and you watch how quickly that matter comes back to you it may not happen tomorrow 
And I'm tired of the entitled attitude these days of instant gratification and I deserve it because the world owes me something. The world doesn't owe you shit. Let me just explain that right now. So for all you millennials, nothing personal, but the world doesn't owe you a fucking thing. And neither do we as taxpayers in the United States or any other country. We don't owe you shit. We all work to get to where we are. Okay? So you need to do the same thing. You need to put in the work, even if you're not a millennial. You need to put in the work every day to keep yourself on a positive track. That way that you attract the positive matter. That means no envy. No being green with envy because someone has prettier hair or eyebrows or a better life. Or make your life what the fuck it is. Make your life what it is what you want it to be and stop blaming everyone else for where it's at. Speak it into existence. Just like the angels. They can't help you unless you ask or they're divinely guided to intervene in your life. Okay? So you need to understand that in order to get help from the angels you need to actively speak it out because the angels deal with energy. When you speak it out, it collects matter. The angels then take it in and feel what it is you need. They don't do language and they don't do fucking mind reading. And so when it comes to karma in every single one of those dimensions, you can earn it by doing simply good or bad If you're envious, if you're hateful, if you're a negative Nancy, if you're judgmental, if you talk shit, if you want to say something, say it to someone's face, okay? I don't care if you're Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Gemini, whatever, those are backwards, Leo, fucking, I don't care what you are. You want to earn negative karma then chitter chatter behind someone's back and play nice to their face because you're taking away their free will as to whether or not they want to be your friend. Free will is in every little thing that we do. Living your best life is living a life where you're authentic and that takes fucking work. So if you're not ready to work, and keep living your shittiest life. Keep putting out bad karma. Keep getting hit by towers. As an Aries, we get hit by towers all the time. March 27th, first to can Aries. Aries rising, first to can. Leo, moon, first to can. Mars, Leo, first to can. I'm authentic as they come. I'm never a different person. I'm always me. And I always say shit to people's faces. If I have a problem, I go to people. In order not to get, just ignore that, it's my email. In order not to receive bad karma, don't wish it on other people. Don't put it out there. Don't be the dumb shit who puts out bad karma and expects good karma in return. Talking shit about somebody or bad mouthing people, I don't care if it's your boss. Tell them your opinion. You know what? I don't want to talk behind your back, but I don't like you particularly. We have to work together. So you stay here, I stay here, I do my job, you leave me the fuck alone. That's the way it works. That's what I did with my bosses that I didn't get along with in the past. Yeah, I pissed them off. Yeah, they hated me. But I did my job and they respected that. Free will is in every little move you make. If you decide to turn left instead of right, free will. Because if you had turned right, 
and there's a three car pile up, who's to say that you weren't in it? If I choose to answer my phone, that's free will. Or I can choose not to answer my phone and that's free will. But it takes me on a different spiritual path with every single decision I make. It changes the dimensions. <sighs> Domino effect. Don't mind my baby girl in the background. She doesn't feel good. It's a <sighs> domino effect, right? Right. So free will affects every decision we make. Every single goddamn decision that you make on this fucking earth is affected by free will, changes the 10 dimensions, never changes the 11th or the 12th because it's a decision. The only thing that changes the 12th where their angels reside is speaking out loud, asking them for help, speaking aloud. 11 doesn't change. It's time time we can't change that it's a man-made device to tell us when we can expect the moon when we can expect the tides when we can expect whatever whatever it is that's man-made these days i don't know i'm indigenous so there's a million things it could be we went by different things so understand that no matter what you put out there this matter attaches itself and goes back out into the en into the energy field. And it brings you exactly what you put out. So if you're sitting around talking shit about people, gossiping about people, being judgmental about people, don't expect that your life is going to be wonderful. You're not authentic. And the energy picks up on that. That is where karma comes from from a quantum physics standpoint. And there's a lot of research out there to prove that what I'm saying is true. There is matter and there's antimatter. There's dark matter. They don't know where antimatter comes from. They have no idea. But there is matter out there and it affects every fucking decision you make. If I were to sit here and trash all 24,000 of you or however many are on this page, I would get that karma. But because I'm not like that, I don't judge any of you. Anyone who's read with me knows I don't judge. I've heard some shit and it hasn't even made me flinch. Being a former forensic rehabilitation specialist and a trauma counselor, there isn't anything I haven't heard. Let's face it, I have, there, I mean, I worked with criminals. I had them in my car, alone, transporting them from their house when they get out of jail back to, I mean, um, some of them are in jail in their house on the bracelet, but transporting them from jail to their house is rehabilitation back into society. And it is my job to make sure that they are good. At least it was seven years of college, two degrees, and 14 certificates later, I'm disabled. So that had its own karma to it. I think I have learned something over these years. So I hope that you will heed what I'm saying and put in the work, change your ways, stop being ju dramatic, judgmental, stop being all of these things that attract karma and start speaking your existence into reality. This is your girl Kelly coming straight at you for the Queen Tarot Bee in Boston. I'm going to go check on my daughter because I hear her and she's squeaking because she hears me. I will catch you on the flip side and leave your comments below. Bye guys.